Look at this. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Did you guys get your Bella plush yet? Because these things are absolutely adorable. I truly love these sets. I'll put a link down in the description. And I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I know mine's gonna be incredible for a whole host of reasons, but one of the things I am really excited about, I don't show this girl off nearly as much. Of course, she is my beautiful emerald tree boa. Guess what? A guy named Matt reached out to me and actually has another female emerald tree boa. Apparently, it's tame, although I really doubt I'll be handling it much. But regardless, he is actually traveling up for I believe it's like Mississippi or something like that down south anyways And he is actually bringing me that animal today I cannot wait to see it because eventually it can go in the cage with this girl here Now the thing with emerald tree boas is that they do need to be quarantined for at least a few months Maybe even up to six months to be totally honest with you because even though these are both captive born animals We've got to make sure that there's no digestive issues emerald tree boas actually suffer from a regurgitation issue So we've got to be extra cautious. So when we get it, we're gonna check it out it's gonna be awesome and then I'll have to set it up in quarantine for the next probably six months regardless it's gonna be amazing and speaking of amazing take a look at how big toothless is getting oh doggy he is just absolutely exploding in size remember when he was just so tiny and I had to assist feed him because he wouldn't even eat now look at this chunky monkey right here oh my god I just have to show you guys this animal because it is getting so big and you know we have a bunch of really cool stuff coming up this next few days so we're actually traveling down to visit my buddy Forrest, see what kind of cool monitor lizards just like Toothless that he has, a bunch of his other cool animals. Not to mention, we're actually picking up some snakes. Cannot wait to share with you guys what we're picking up. Oh my God, I tell you what, Toothless is absolutely breathtaking. You know, it's been kind of an internet sensation lately that when you throw vans up in there, they always land on the hill. Well, guess what? Same thing happens with the Bella plushie. Let's try it again. See, the new internet sensation. My company is here, Matt is here with his family. You drove 1,100 miles. Yep. Oh my God, you guys are awesome. And it, like I had mentioned, he actually brought me a gift, which I'm pretty excited about. You know, this is like, was one of my dream snakes when I was young. Of course, I showed you I own an emerald tree boa now, but when I was younger, I was absolutely in love with emerald tree boas. So I'm super excited. Let's go ahead and take a look at this little monkey, right? Let's see what we got. Look at her. Oh my gosh, she is so pretty. Oh my very gosh. Tame. And this one's tame, you said, very huh? Very tame, very tame. Oh my gosh, wow. Look at how pretty she is. She definitely is a beautiful, beautiful snake. And emerald tree boas, again, are really not so much a handling snake. This one seems to be super docile, but typically you don't handle them all that much just because, you know, they're not really meant to be handled. You know, they basically sit on a tree just like this, and that's what it is. And uh, so like I had mentioned, she is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. No problem, this is bro. awesome. No uh, I had mentioned I'm going to put her like in a quarantine thing. To be honest with you, probably about six months will quarantine her before she would end up back here at the Reptarium. But I think having two in the display will be pretty awesome and I couldn't be more excited about it. And the thing that's neat about emerald tree balls is that everyone is really different. Some have super high white, some have a little bit of white. You can see this one has quite a bit of yellow in the sides and over here in the tail. But definitely a very beautiful snake. And they all have that like really big beefy head and that's why you don't want to get bit by those guys is because they have huge, huge teeth. This one is definitely very receptive. Seems to be really keyed in on heat and everything else right now. So that's a really good sign. So I'm going to go ahead uh, show these guys around the Reptarium and BHB and then I will uh, get this girl set up and like I said we'll kind of keep monitoring her and I'll keep you guys posted over the next six months and hopefully maybe by the end of summer or so she'll be here at the Reptarium. Hey Lori guess what? what? Have you ever heard of the Vans thing with van shoes that if you throw a van shoe up in the air it always lands on its sole? No. It's true. Well check this out. Go ahead pick it up and throw it down. Toss it. I, this is what you're doing? You're just up front, like pick throwing? It up, pick it up and throw it. I'm, I'm gonna throw it at you. <laughs> pick it up and throw it. I can't Look at this, is amazing. Number one, this you is shouldn't amazing. be throwing them. Look, it just tossed it. It'll be fun. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? Oh my God, would you just go work? <laughs> you know what I was thinking would be kind of funny? Of course I have all these amazing ambassador animals like my girl Bella here, but you know, animals don't really have a voice. So I was thinking maybe I would go around today and just take a few of my animals starting with Bella here and see if I can maybe find some funny clips of what I think they would be saying if they could talk. 
What do you think, Bella? You want to give that a shot? What would you say if you could talk? I'm not interested in your little ideas. I'm interested in something much larger. Well, I honestly, I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, I'll go around and do it to a couple animals. Go ahead and do me a favor. Go down in the comments. Tell me what animals you'd like me to feature in something like this if you want to do something fun. And then tell me what clip that you think they would be saying. So go ahead, pick an animal and then pick a clip. And I'll try to highlight that in maybe in the next few days. I just think it'll be really fun. So here's the deal. Even though this is an absolutely gorgeous animal, we do see that it has a couple blisters on it that probably is just a little bit high humidity. Which is completely fine because we can get the right humidity probably is going to shut off really good. I like the fact that it's really responsive, but what I'm going to do is keep this kind of like my buddy Forrest keeps his emeralds and green tree pythons, or at least when he keeps them in tubs. I'm going to actually remove the towel from this and just keep it bare bottom. So I can really disinfect it almost every single day. So we'll go ahead, we'll keep some branches in here, make sure it has heat spot. We'll make sure that the humidity is up enough to where it has the right humidity, but we want it to be too humid because again, you can see like on its head and on its back, it just has a little bit of blistering and stuff like that. And again, I think that within one shed, it'll totally be fine. It's supposedly eating really good, but we'll keep the meals pretty small to make sure that it doesn't have any regurgitation problems. Because again, that's what really happens with emerald tree boas. Because we don't know the origin of this animal, I don't know 100% where it came from, who bred it, if it is captive bred. We think that it's probably captive bred, but we don't know for sure. So I'm not gonna assume anything. The last thing I wanna do is put an animal like this in with the one that I have that I know is captive and potentially kill that. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this down here in the dungeon kind of isolated from everything else for probably six months in all honesty, at least four months, at least four months. If there's no problems after four months, I can maybe start to make a decision. In the meantime, we're just gonna go ahead and leave it alone. Again, I'll take the towel out, disinfect this cage, and kind of just leave it alone. Probably in four or five days, we'll try to feed it, and then we can start to catalog everything that we're seeing. How does its stools look? How is it eating? How is it moving? Is it drinking? All of those other things. Regardless, I'm super happy because I love emerald tree balls, and I'm excited to have another one in. We have our work cut out for us to make sure that it will eventually get over to the reptarium, but nevertheless, this animal is gorgeous. And speaking of gorgeous, this is actually a lorry leopard ball python, and it's being bred to a super lorry backed up, which is a normal lorry male. Regardless, she is at 30 millimeter follicles right now. So it looks like we are gonna get a clutch from this girl. If the super lorry is the father, we're gonna have half the babies are gonna be super lorries, and half the babies will be lorries, essentially. But on average, one in three are gonna be super lorry leopards. No idea what that's gonna look like, but it is so cool that she's getting closer and closer to ovulation. And we have a bunch of ball pythons that are getting that 30, 35 millimeter mark, which means that probably within the next week and a half, two weeks, we'll start to see some ovulations. Then what you have is about 50 days from there, you'll have eggs. And then of course, two months from there, you'll have babies. So, oh my God, I am so excited for babies this season. What do you say we try Lucy? Of course, short for Lucifer. Uh, what would she have to say if she could tell me anything she wants to? Why didn't you just go home? That's your home. Are you too good for your home? Answer me! You know, I'm not really sure why, but when I think of tortoises, I'm always thinking kind of like a derpy type of thing, maybe not that intelligent. I shouldn't feel that way because I'm sure they're very intelligent. They've been around forever, and they certainly are unbelievably cool animals. Of course, Savvy here is always cruising around BHB. As a matter of fact, I have something else I'll be sharing with you guys pretty soon. The chance that Savvy may be actually going to live with Jessica and Bruce, and we might be bringing Speedy over here because we might be getting another tortoise. I can't say much about it, but that will be in the next week or so. I'm pretty excited. I cannot wait to share it with you guys. Regardless, Savvy, what would you say if you could say anything to me you want? Okay guys, I'm gonna leave it at that when it comes to animal voices, but I do wanna know from you guys what animals you'd like me to do in the future, or you think it's just silly and I shouldn't do it anymore. And again, if you think it's cool, tell me the animal, tell me what clip, and I'll try to find it and insert it into a vlog coming up. Maybe I'll do an entire vlog. Regardless, there's so many exciting things happening here at BHB. Obviously, Colubrids are out of hibernation, so we're gonna be feeding them. Like I said, I'm heading down to forest, gonna be picking up some animals. I cannot wait to share with that. I just kinda spilled the beans about a tortoise that I'm working on. I tell you what, things are so absolutely Absolutely incredible. And by the way, we're getting close to launch the closed beta when it comes to our reptile game. And I am going to tell you, it's going to be called Reptile Tycoon. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to need at least several hundred people to be playing the closed beta so that you can give us your feedback of what we should add, what isn't working, what we need to kind of do better. And then we'll go to open beta and then eventually a launch of the game. So what I think I'm going to do is actually put an email link in the description. You guys go ahead and sign up for that email if you want to be a part of the closed beta and play my reptile breeding game. And then 
then we can kind of have fun together. More on that in the next few days. Let me just take a quick break about something. Truth is, guys, I see the stuff that happens on the interwebs, but I just prefer to kind of stay away from the drama of things, you know? It's interesting because that spider ball python video I did, that was just kind of an emotional response to it. And truth be told, if I go back and think of some of the things I said, I'd probably change some of my opinions. I mean, there's no doubt that all the people that have made a wave of videos that basically are using my name to kind of attract attention and, uh, you know, maybe rightfully so to an interesting topic. I think that it does deserve some more conversation and I'm willing to listen. I mean, there is no doubt that maybe I was emotional. I kind of spewed a lot of my kind of emotion into it. That being said, I think a lot of the counter arguments are really not all that great. Some of them are. I don't want to get that wrong. I just want to tell you that a lot of them are based in lack of education. I've talked a lot about this. If you don't like the spider gene, well, then you better not like the Walma gene. You better not like the hidden gene Walma. And again, if you breed certain things together like lesser to lesser or pie to lesser or cinnamon to cinnamon, black pastel to black pastel, and the list goes on and on. There's a lot of things that go wrong with these animals and it seems like people are picking on just the spider gene. And that's okay. If we want to continue your conversation, I think that's absolutely amazing. With that being said, it's kind of weird that so many people have used my name in the title. Like I'm the only one that ever breeds spiders or works with spider ball pythons. The truth is, guys, I didn't make the spider ball python. I haven't really made money on spider ball pythons in forever. They're not like a very expensive animal. I mean, I sell them for like $85 or $90. It's not like I'm paying my bills with selling spider ball pythons. Certainly my emotions behind it is because of my love of the animals, not because of the money beside it, because really, I don't really make much money on breeding snakes these days. You guys may know that. Some people may not even believe me, but the truth is BHB is kind of a hobby for me. It's probably the least thing that I do that actually makes money. So I don't have like a financial gain by having spider ball pythons in my collection. I just think they're really cool. That being said, I'm open for conversation. I just wanted to express to you guys, because so many people have asked, like, are you going to respond to it? The truth is, I don't respond to that kind of drama. The majority of those videos, especially the ones that are using my name in the title, are doing it just to create clicks for themselves. They may have some very valid points about the spider gene, and I will be happy to listen to them, but they don't have to kind of exploit kind of going against me to do it. That's kind of what happens. In a way, I should probably be kind of honored by it, right? Because they think that my name is going to gain them attention, and the more attention they gain, the more people are going to want to jump on the bandwagon to continue to gain attention. That's why you've seen this outpouring of videos that have my name in the title. And by the way, just for the record, it's a violation of the terms of service to YouTube to use my name in the video. I could actually strike down all of those videos without a problem. Within 24 hours, every video with my name in could be taken down. I'm not going to do that because why should I? Let them have their attention. Let them have their fame for the minute. And you guys can decide who is the genuine person or not. But the fact is, is that as you get more popular, more people are going to gun for you. Right now, I get gunned for all the time about all kinds of stuff and it doesn't really bother me anymore because I know who I am. You guys know who I am. If people say that I don't love the animals or I'm doing it just for the fame or the money, then they don't know who I am and it's a problem with them, not a problem with me. I'm not going to talk about this anymore because again, I don't like to dwell on negatives. I like to dwell on the positive and there are so many amazing things happening but I did want to address it just so you guys know where I stand on it. I don't know how many times I've said that I love this monkey tail skinker Solomon Island skin cave. You can see the one way back in the corner over there. They're so predictable. I mean, they hide through the day about six or seven o'clock at night they always come down and they're always hiding right underneath this leaf oh there's one underneath there right now look at that little cute little monkey right there but the thing that i love about it is really you don't see them a whole lot but i just love the cage because i know they're so happy they can climb and they can hide they've got all kinds of different options with different temperatures different you know darkness and lightness and all kinds of stuff like that i think it's amazing now what's interesting is that they come down every night again around six or seven o'clock and they crush a bowl of food every single day today is the first time when i've come there's still food left, even though they ate about half it. And I tell you why, okay? We actually got pothos. See this plant right here? That's a live pothos plant. Now we got that from a nursery that doesn't use any pesticides, no chemicals as far as growth and stuff like that. And uh, they love eating the pothos. I mean, look at the entire plant is basically eaten. There's just a couple leaves left. And as a matter of fact, Bruce told me last night he came over here and he saw one chop it down on the leaves. I am so happy. I don't know why I get so excited about that. I just think it's cool because again, it's like such a naturalistic thing. I love these guys. So even though we may not see them too often, they still are absolutely incredible. Look at this. Oh. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> 
we actually were open today at the Reptarium. It was a really good day, but I didn't want to kind of bore you guys. You know, I'm always thinking like, I don't want to do the same thing over and over again. And some of you guys are like, I like seeing the Reptarium. Other ones are like, I fast forward through it. So I just decided we we're gonna kind of glaze over it. But nevertheless, we're just getting to the end of the night. There's maybe like 15, 20 people in. So it's kind of chilling out. Earlier, it was really awesome and really busy. So we had a good time. Regardless, I am gonna about shut down the vlog here. I'm gonna go check on BHB really quick. And then we are gonna get out of here in the next maybe half hour. And like I said, just coming in and checking out BHB. I am so excited that we're going to start feeding these guys within the next couple days. I miss this one in particular. Of course, this is my leucistic scaleless Texas rat snake. It's just such a goofy looking animal. And I hope we produce a bunch more of these this year because I think they're just really, really wild. I mean, so bizarre looking. But nevertheless, you know, things are definitely looking like they're ready to get going. And like I mentioned, we're definitely going to be feeding these guys a lot over the next few months. Start breeding in about a week, week and a half. And it won't be long before we get eggs. So it's going to be a really fun time. But nevertheless, good to see some of these beautiful animals again. Thank you.